Welcome along to Trip Notes. It's brought to you by the New Zealand Herald Travel section, also Intrepid Travel. It's co-hosted by Deputy Editor of New Zealand Herald Travel, Stephanie Holmes, and myself, Hi. Tim Roxburgh. How's it going? Good, good. We have a big guest, as we always Very do. Very excited, yeah. And, and, and the, the little backstory on this particular person has been on our longest and greatest soap opera, almost, not quite, but almost continuously since 1992. That's amazing. Yeah. Michael Galvin, Dr. Welcome. Chris Warner. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> thank, thank you for coming in. Oh, taking a break from busy filming schedules. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Fitting it in. Yeah. yeah. Very nice to see you. Very nice to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. So we're, we're going to find out a little bit about some of the places you've been uh, and, and some memories you have and some yarns you have uh, with travel. Uh, we're going to do for our travel bug section, when you bump into people overseas, people that either recognize you, perhaps in your case, um, or for those of us who aren't famous, people that we kind of mean? know. What do you mean? We're famous. We're totally well, no, famous now. Very famous, you're right. Um, <laughs> when you bump into people you kind of know, and it's kind of awkward to bump into them. So yeah. uh, we, we've got some stories we want to share about that. And our destination of the week. It's made up of over 330 islands, population just under 1 million, and what I love, uh, amongst many things, it has bananas on the flag. So. <laughs> I didn't know that. Wow. Learning things already. We're so, like less than five minutes in. That's, that's right. So yeah. that'll be coming up soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, Michael, um, my first question, have you ever been on an airplane when they've said, is there a doctor on board? And did you ever feel like you could get up and help? Um, no and no. Thank goodness. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I am worried about that and people kind of giving me sideways looks and why aren't you going to help out? But I, funnily enough, it, it's never happened to me. People have never expected me to give them medical advice. So really? yeah, my explanation for that is like if they do watch the show, that I must be a terrible doctor because <laughs> they think, oh, he is a doctor but a bad one. So we won't ask him for advice. Because I've watched years and years of ER and Shortland Street and Grey's Anatomy. I, I feel like I could do an emergency I feel the same way. Maybe? I feel like I could do yeah. that. That's the tracheotomy. Those are the easy ones. You just, you know, make a little <laughs> slit in the throat, <laughs> shove in a pen. And, uh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I mean, a bit more complicated. But that's but, bizarre. Yeah. People haven't asked you because baddies on the show, like it's notorious that if you're a baddie on the show and then you're at New World or something, that people are like, you know, and, and they're really angry when they see the baddie because they think the baddie is a baddie in happen. real life. <laughs> it does happen. Yeah, but it doesn't work the other way so much with the with the medical advice. I, I don't know. Like I say, I, I think they, they think I'm a doctor, but a bad one. So that, that's my only explanation for it, you know, because okay. I, I really, I've never been asked any medical okay. advice. Yeah. That's good. Would you have any medical advice to give if you were I feel asked? I would, yeah. yeah. I feel I feel like opening up, opening up a practice sometimes, you know, mm. with all, using all this knowledge that I've gained from the show. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's very superficial knowledge. Like I know, I, I know a few words, uh, none that I can remember right now, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah. But, but beyond yeah. a tracheotomy, you, you could help out. I'm sure I could. Child, yeah. childbirth, my wife, yeah. you know. Of course. Uh, giving I've, birth yeah, I've, had, I've had six of them myself on the show, so, <laughs> so I wasn't there for three of them, but never mind. Yeah, I, I think maybe my, uh, my enthusiasm might outstrip my knowledge, but, yeah. um, you know, what the heck. It takes that's you a long way, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Enthusiasm, yeah. confidence. Yeah. It's all about confidence. In a doctor. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. long as they think I know what I'm doing, it'll be fine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. speaking of enthusiasm, where, mm. where um, are some of the places you've travelled that you're enthusiastic about? Um, well, I have to start with a disclaimer saying I'm, I'm a really bad traveller. Traveller has never been a priority. Travel has never been a priority for me. So the places that I've been to, um, it's generally to do with work, okay. and, and the one that springs to mind for me is uh, Japan. I, I went. I was lucky enough to go there um, with a musical, a New Zealand musical, which for some reason has very strong connections to Japan. Okay. So um, that was fantastic. We started in the north, and uh, I think it's uh, a Sapporo, and then did about seven or eight, just kind of zigzagging our way down the country, mm. seven or eight um, centres. Uh, finishing up in uh, Hiroshima, which was uh, uh, staggering, and spending quite a lot of time in uh, Tokyo and Osaka, okay. which were amazing. I mean, this was uh, 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> nearly 20 years ago, so the previous century. But nevertheless, the 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 technology of the place, you know, it was it was staggering, and and the the uh, the differences between there and here. Mm. 
the space, for example, everything there was so compact. You know, you go go everywhere, and even the you know the big like the Tower Records. We don't have record stores anymore. Oh, That's how long ago this was. But the <laughs> the kind of the eight floor Tower Records they had, yeah. even though it was a massive, massive shop, every everything was so just crammed in, squeezed in. You know, we're just in New Zealand, just used to so much space mm. everywhere. That was a big uh, a big difference. Yeah. And, uh, but also the um, there's a lot of space, but it it doesn't kind of feel crowded. Um, it's, I hope it's not a racial generalization to say, but th- there's a calmness about the place. Like I, I've lived in London, mm. and you could be on a tube with like you know six people, and two of them are shouting at each other, and and another <laughs> one is shouting at himself, you know, and it feels very crowded. You yeah. know, there's seven of you, and it feels very crowded, but a very crowded. Um, tube I found anyway going in, in uh, Tokyo getting the tube here and there even though there's a lot of people on it it doesn't feel crowded there's there's a kind of a calmness and a respect for other people's space yeah. and um, sense of order uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well just a, just a general I don't know what it is a, a sensitivity to other people mm. and, and, and and the effect that you're having on them even strangers especially strangers yeah uh, it, it I was wish so we impressive. had that in Auckland. <laughs> oh, don't yeah, get that yeah, on the yeah. buses here. <laughs> no, we're not. We're used to a lot of space, I think, and yeah. and we get angry when, when people encroach on our remember space. If people made chit chat, because the whole thing about the tube in London is that that you don't, oh, you don't chat, talk. you don't no. talk with don't strangers, make eye contact. and and it's really frowned upon. If you're like, well, so how's your day going? You know. Oh no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I think there's too. I think there's too many crazies basically in London. You know, you see people talking, but they're talking to themselves yeah. very angrily, and you think, oh well, I don't really want to participate in that conversation. You yeah. know, there's. A, I, I saw a lot of that in London. People right. talking yeah. to themselves. But in Japan, in Japan, uh, is there chit chat? No, no, I just it just seemed a lot saner to be honest. Right. I, I, I read didn't, somewhere um, that you're not al- like you're certainly not allowed to um, talk on the phone and on public transport really? in oh, Tokyo. Right? Yeah, is like it's right? a, you know very respectful for other people's yeah, um, journey as well. That, yeah. A lot of that. One time it was raining. We were in a, one of the smallest cities, and it started raining. It, uh, this is what one of the musicians was saying, and he was just walking around, and, and he had started. And it was oh, he thought oh, it's raining, and and a car pulled up, and and a, just a random stranger, stranger gave him an umbrella, and waved off and went goodbye, and just things like that, just this real consideration, yeah. you know. And um, it sounds uh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, that was it was terrific. It was terrific, and like even in um, in the big centres in Tokyo, I remember I remember kind of wandering around one Friday night after the show and we thought, oh, you know, big city, this is going to be dangerous, you know, drunk people around. And, and there were drunk people around, but they weren't aggressive. They were just really silly. Just like, they just <laughs> like alcohol, just they were singing and, <laughs> and, 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 and it was so great. Karaoke, and, and dancing. Obviously and very popular in that kind of That kind of attitude, yeah, just yeah. had a, a really nice vibe about it, the whole place. Yeah. And what about when you were in London? Did you enjoy living there? I, I was kind of dirt poor. And uh, failing miserably at oh. trying to be an actor there. So that, on the one hand, you know that that was that was a depressive factor. <laughs> on the other hand, I absolutely loved the place. I mm. just I would like I had no money, so I, I I couldn't really go out. But I um I would just walk everywhere, no matter where I was. I'd, if it took an hour or an, and a half to walk into town, I'd do that because it, inevitably there, there'd be something fascinating, even if it was a supposedly semi-industrial. Area just just the history and yeah. everything, and I, I was I was actually born in London. Oh, right. um, my dad was uh, posted over there. He he's, he was an economist, and he was posted over there with the New Zealand government. Like some trade talks, I think GATT or something, in the the late sixties. And so I, I had uh, citizenship. Okay, but I certainly didn't feel like a London. I certainly felt like a Kiwi. Yeah, you know, walking around, and I, I just absolutely loved the um, the history of it and the parks. You know, mm. the beautiful parks and the way you can. Go from you know St James's Park and then through to Hyde Park and it just just I just absolutely loved it. Yeah. This was during a hiatus as Chris Warner, wasn't it? Yes, yes. I, I left the show in, in nineteen ninety six uh, and I came back to you know to seek my fame and fortune and guess what <laughs> I didn't find it. Uh, You're but not the it, only one. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at peace with it now. Um, and but in two thousand I got a call. Or was it nineteen ninety nine? I got a call. Saying, "Oh, do you want to come back?" And so oh, that's when I was living in London, yeah. you know, very poor, and I did have to think about it. But uh, I went, "Oh no, actually, that would be pretty neat." So I kind of I came back. Yeah. Mm. Did you ever do the LA? Um, no, I never thing, did. Like some so many of our no, actors do. No, I never did, and I've I've left it too late now. I, I feel, and I have absolutely no desire to do that. I just love 
where I am so much. I, I just love it so much. And I feel so lucky. So I, I have no desire to do that. No, I, I did it. The, I kind of, yeah, I, I did the seeking fame and fortune thing the wrong way around. I went to London because my partner at the time got a, uh, a scholarship to study at the Slade Art School, which is a highly prestigious yeah. um, art school. She is a brilliant, uh, she's not my partner anymore, but a brilliant artist. And um, I went, so I went, I thought, well, I've got a, I've got a, a British citizenship, so I should go too. So, you know, and, I, and I'll, I'll try to get into acting that way. But uh, London isn't really, well, not for me anyway, it's not really set up for outsiders the way that L.A. is. You know, L.A., they're very used to the idea of, of people coming from all over, you know, over the last few decades, particularly Australians, mm. have done extremely well, and Kiwis. So they're used to that. They're kind of open. To, but, but London was very much kind of like, well, we've got so many actors here. Um, we don't need a and, – and also I was I – was well, we don't – we're not casting any New Zealanders, you know. Okay. Like, How oh, hard was that go. when you were there? Because, you know, you'd, you'd yeah, had was, such great success and, and, yeah. and that's, that's confronting to be told. Yeah, it was really hard. And I, and I had all these, you know, supposed connections um, uh, through my agent here, but they kind of never amounted – to anything and 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 I would try to get all sorts of things going and not and I write as well so I was trying to get things going through that and and uh, yeah nothing was happening so no it was it was uh, that that was certainly you know disheartening but uh, balanced against that was the kind of the magic of the place mm. you know the just such an amazing the place the the history the stories everywhere you went you you think a thousand stories you know, of, of people that you know or or, or didn't know but I. I did know a lot of them because all the kind of the, the books and things that I'd read and the music I was into, it was all English, mm. you know. Yeah. Uh, so. It's amazing when you're in a place like, say, Westminster Abbey. And, and I, I just remember I, I just watched a movie about William Wilberforce, the, the abolitionist, and then I was in Westminster Abbey and then, oh, my gosh, this is where he's buried. Yeah. You know, and this is a guy who spent, like, decades trying to, to rid – England of, of being part of the slave trade, you know, and so you're, you're at the, the, the foot of this grave inside this incredible building going, you, you fundamentally made the world a better place. <laughs> yeah. Like what a, what a phenomenal human. Oh my gosh, you're, this is where you're laid to rest. <laughs> yeah. it, Absolutely. I found, that sort of thing I found, found quite mind blowing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And, and the, and the artists that you, that you love, if you, if you're me, you know, like the Beatles and things like that. I, I was obsessed with the Beatles shop. I would go in there all the time and, and, and of course the Abbey Road, um, uh, the pedestrian crossing. Yeah. I, I did one of the many. I, I had all these kind of strange, odd jobs when I was living there. But one of them was delivering mail and around the St. That was kind of the St. John's Wood area. Okay. And uh, and and so I'd, I'd go. I'd be delivering mail to the Abbey Road studio sometimes. I was like, oh, this is so great. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And Lord's Cricket Ground and yeah, all, all those, of that. Yes. All those places. Are very. Yeah. Did you recreate the photo at all? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't bring myself to be that cliche. I, I had to draw and a line somewhere. You can recreate on your own, like, <laughs> yeah. especially in it those is. days, so no selfie sticks. I, and yeah. I could have got three random strangers, but then I would have been one of those crazies that yeah. I was previously complaining about. So, yeah. And you'd take yeah. your shoes off, you'd be Paul McCartney, you'd be barefoot in that's the suit. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's mm. dedicated. <laughs> but, but I think as far as, you know, Shortland Street, that. that um, a lot of growing up for people is re okay. Well, well, what am I here for? And then, was there a moment when you went, you know what? How amazing if I'm like the most iconic character on my nation's longest running um, soap opera? That's actually a, a really special thing. Well, that's very uh, nice of you. Thank you for saying that. But I, I just, I, I honestly don't think of it that way. I just think in terms of um, it's a job that I love. You know, it's acting, and 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 the pay is is pretty decent, and. Um, it allows uh, me to have a certain um, a predictability in my mm. life, which is great for me and my daughter, yeah. you know. And uh, it's it's fantastic people always coming through, you know. Uh, I, I, and I, I just kind of think of it that way. I, 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 I learned uh, earlier on in the game that the more I uh, focused on, uh, I don't know the right word for it, but, you know, your image, your identity or whatever, as you think people see you, um, I, I just found the more I focused on that, the, the less happy I was, and the mm. more kind of anxious and everything. And <laughs> and the, and the more I can just focus on, uh, you know, uh, on the real things, which is, is it, which is the job, you know, and, and doing that well, and and getting on with my coworkers, and you know, trying to be a good dad and all that stuff. And uh, uh, the more I think about that, and the less I think about um, how it's uh, perceived or whatever, you know, I, uh, the the 
the happier I am. And I, and I, but I am aware of it because I, I get I did a lot of you get a lot of goodwill. You know, people uh, unless as you uh, said, unless you're a baddie, <laughs> then you get a lot of bad will. But people don't see me as a baddie, thank goodness. So I, I get a lot of people. Uh, coming up and uh, you know wanting photos and it's terrific. It's yeah. it's wonderful. I say a lot. I don't I don't mean you know I don't mean I'm mobbed or anything. But I, but wow. a, a re, you know it happens fairly regularly. And I, I think that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, well let, let's maybe touch on maybe getting mobbed. Um, <laughs> so we move. It to happens the... to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, Is that special. what you wanted to talk about? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I did know so, this actually. <laughs> the security guards. Yeah. So yeah. so let's move wow. to the the travel bug section of the podcast and and we wanted to talk about when you're overseas. And either you bump into people who you sort of know, or perhaps in your case, is there a place in the world where you've been where, say, Shortland Street's especially popular? Yeah, funny you should mention that. that <laughs> we've we've been sh- we've shot the show twice now in Fiji. We flew over for a week and do, do it, and uh, and I didn't realise it. Well, I did the second time I went. But the thing about Fiji in relation to Shortland Street is it's kind of this. Um, inverted thing where I mean everywhere else Shortland Street is either unknown or kind of just you know it's, it's mildly interesting yeah. that you're on Shortland Street but in Fiji it's the biggest thing you could possibly be I, I think apart from maybe a rugby sevens player yeah. is on Shortland Street wow. it's just absolutely massive the first time we arrived there so this was in the in the 90s the first time we shot there me and um, Laura Hill who was playing Tony Warner my wife at the time the, the taxi driver was driving us to our hotel, and he's saying, oh, yeah, well, last week I was driving Cameron Diaz and Justin Timberlake around, and we're like, wow. And he said, yeah, but everyone's way more excited about you guys. <laughs> so we're like, okay, so this is kind of like this topsy-turvy world where Shortland Street out, out, you know, beats everything else, That's beats incredible. movies. And, yeah, it was nuts. And it was you, really like, nuts. I couldn't, no, it was, it was a little, it, to... no, no, I could, yeah. uh, but, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't walk from, from you know, from me to you, without without someone stopping for a for a photograph, it was it was a little taste of what it must be like to be proper famous. You know, like yeah. your um, you know, your Angelina Jolies and your your Brad Pitts and things. Because, and there were like people waiting outside the the hotel door. You know, when you open your hotel door of your hotel room, there were people waiting outside there. It's like. Okay, this is kind of now. I kind of got a little, and of course, it was only for a week, and and you know, it was very thrilling yeah. initially to to be that, that people think you were that special. But um, I, at the end of the week, I thought, wow, now I get why they go mad and do strange things. You know, <laughs> those famous people, because you really, it's really, it is a strange thing to not be able to go anywhere, yeah. you know, mm. <laughs> and have people. Because what surround happens when you're walking you. around Auckland or New Zealand? Like, oh, it's you... on, oh, quite often nothing. Okay. Of, often nothing. Yeah, most yeah. of the time nothing. Yeah, yeah. especially it, Auckland. If if I went to a smaller, if if you know people on TV, Shortland Street, go to a smaller place, we'll probably get more attention because mm. it's more of a novelty. But um, uh, maybe you know once or twice if I go out, it, it might happen. Do you know but, the story um, about Angela Diordani, the late Angela Diordani? Oh yes, I uh, remember her. Uh, it was a fantastic news reader, and, and she yeah. she had she had star power, um, yeah. and she knew yeah. it. And and the story was that she'd always go to a different supermarket. Um, because she'd like to be recognised in as many places as possible. <laughs> so, really? <laughs> just, oh, Maybe that's where I'm going wrong. I need to start going to different supermarkets. Different get, supermarkets. Get, yeah. Get yeah. Well, I mean, you've got to give the fans what they want, and if it's, if it's just in the same place, you know, you're, you're yeah. really letting a lot of fans down. And then what about the second time you went to Fiji? Was it even worse? Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was crazier. Um, by that stage, everyone had phones, so oh, there was it wasn't game so much asking autographs, but it was pictures, which in a way is, is better because it's quicker. Yeah, I, sh- I should say that the, when the when the Fijians uh, the, asked us for you know for, they were in, invariably gracious, incredibly gracious about it. There was no aggression. Mm. You know, you never felt threatened or or even kind of crowded, even, yeah. even though there were a lot of people. But um, the. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty nuts. I felt I felt like a visiting dignitary. It was nuts. Yeah, and, and you know, I could go to a school and and um, well, one, one time we went to a school and there were hundreds of hundreds of kids and suddenly they and they said, oh, and now and now Chris Warner will will give us a speech. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I just wasn't expecting it. But of course, you know, the way if you're if you're a visiting dignitary, you expect to you know stand yeah. up and give your little speech or something. But 
I'm not. I'm just a stupid actor, and I'm just used to saying everyone else's words. And suddenly, like, okay, I have to tell these kids, you know, something. So what did something you do? Worthwhile. Did you I just recite your lines? Tracheotomy memories. <laughs> no, but what did you? I said tracheotomy memories. I mean, what did, what did no, you say? No, no, something came out. I don't remember. They, they, were, they had they had something, some award they were giving. So I think I alluded to that. And, yeah. You know, the the virtues well extolled in that award. Luckily, I opened my mouth and something mildly intelligent came out. But I do. I do remember being a bit freaked out about and thinking, wow, people are really looking at me as yeah. if I um, have all these qualities that I do not have. Yeah, you know, I I guess, don't, I, I'm, I'm being read into all these virtues. <laughs> yeah, and they're not looking at you. They're looking at Chris Warner. That's so, exactly yeah. it. That's yeah. exactly it. I, I, I think I think maybe the Shortland Street as a TV show for Fijians. I, it, it, it certainly, you know, I've been told by so many people that where they live, it just stops and everyone watches the show. And if you don't have a TV, you'll go to someone's house who does have a TV. And I, I've been told by so many different people from Fiji that that's what happens. The, the, everything stops when Short and Street yeah. comes on. So may, maybe it's a, it's, there's something aspirational about it. You know, a lot of them think about going to New Zealand. Mm. And so it's a window onto a New Zealand that they might move to or they have family there, you know, yeah. or they've always thought about going to. Or... Guatemala's the other one. I, I was in Guatemala 10 years ago. <laughs> Were you really? And, and my, my tour guide, the a, a local guy, and straight away, as soon as he realised I was a Kiwi, he mentioned Shortland Street. And he's like, everyone in Guatemala knows Shortland Street because of that very first episode. Oh, you're Is kidding. That just yeah. that one line? That it's one line. Wow. You're not in Guatemala it's, now, Dr. Ropita. It's hilarious. Yeah. Speaking of it's iconic hilarious. lines, um, your, your penis line. It is now, it is now trumped. It Are is we now, allowed to mention that? We can't. Trump okay. the Guatemalan line, I think. I do what, what was it? Please tell me that is not your penis? Yeah, please tell me that is not your penis. Yes, yes, yes. And this was to your son? This was to my son, yes, looking on his, um, on his iPad. But, uh, you know, it, I did think at the time, and it has been mentioned to me after, is it, well, isn't it better that it's his penis than someone yeah. else's? You know, <laughs> isn't it better that he's sending people pictures of his than just having pictures of random penises on his? Well, I don't know. You anyway, see, I think we should get back to Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't bring it up. <laughs> you, just, you said it with such gusto. It was, it was amazing. Just what you're saying, the, the only thing that, that's comparable for me, other than one time I was actually in Fiji and I saw someone I'd gone to primary school with, and we were... In the, by coincidence, and this is in the line at the airport. Uh, by coincidence, we were staying at the same resort, and so I said, "Oh well, let, let's let's share a taxi." And and the, the person's partner um, it was clearly like a romantic holiday, and so she <laughs> she said oh. she said no, and I was like, <laughs> "Okay." And then so. Oh, fine then. And then so two taxis drove in convoy to the same resort, which was an hour and a half away. And I was like, I felt like such a loser. But, you know, they, I don't know. I kind of, I think I'm, I'm like more like her than, than you yes. in this situation. Like, I kind of, I just, I don't really like it when I go on holiday and I see people I know. I'm kind of like, so I'm on holiday. I want to hang out and not think about home. And So you'd say no to a shared uh, taxi ride? Only if it's a romantic I mean, one. I'm probably, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, probably oh, too polite. I probably would let you into the taxi, but then I'd spend the rest of the holiday talking to my partner about how annoying that was and how we should have done it. Probably. This, this yeah. is very upsetting. The, the other one I wanted to mention in India, um, you can feel like you're famous. You know, but people still get excited. In some parts of India, still get very excited if you're you're a Western tourist. Oh, okay. And and I was in a zoo in a place called Mysore, and and there were kids on a school trip. And they followed us. And it's an amazing zoo. It's one of the best in, in all of uh, the subcontinent. And so it's a huge zoo. And for two hours, these kids just followed us around and, and were taking photos. And, you know, and How it's like, funny. Yeah. It's like, wow. And, and Shortland Street's not shown there. And I'm not on Shortland Street. <laughs> and I don't know. They, they, were, they were just excited. Um, now, we've talked a lot about Fiji. Let's, let's talk about Fiji in a bit more detail for our destination of the week. Yes. And, and Stephanie, you've been? I've been a number of times, actually. I'm very lucky. And I, I think... Um, We've talked about this before, like where if people ask you where your favourite place in the world is, and I think I said New Zealand would be it. But I think if I had a second, I probably would say Fiji. Like it's such an easy place to get to for us in New mm. Zealand. We're so lucky. To so any recommendations? Flight. Um, I love the Asawas. So they're a group of islands um, northwest of um, Nandi, the main island, and they are just stunning. They're so beautiful. It's like the picture perfect paradise that you expect when you think of Fiji and you know just white sand beaches and the snorkeling is incredible like you can just step off the beach five steps and look down and you know is it crowded like with tourists no not really I don't think so there's so many of different islands that you kind of you spread out across you know different islands oh, and wonderful. there's some that are like real budget backpacker islands there's some that are like super super luxe so you can kind of get whatever you're looking for 
um, I yeah, I love it. I, yeah. I'd go back in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, one recommendation I'd give it is um, on on the main night. So when you land in the in Nandy, um, go along to the Coral Coast, and there's this activity called Eco Tracks where mm. they've set it up on an old sugarcane railway, and it's about a century old the railway, and it's been it was disused for many years, and and it, so it goes through all these tree tunnels, and then and then through like natural tunnels, and then over rickety kind of Indiana Jones looking bridges, and and then past coastline, and then through villages, and and the Kids come out. They're they're excited to to see you, whether you're on Shortland Street or not. And <laughs> um, and and the kids high five you. And and you're on uh, you're on e bikes, which have then been put onto these these buggies, which go on the rails. And then you top That's it off awesome. with, with a swim and a snorkel. That and fun. and That's awesome. Yeah. And it was set up by by a Kiwi who was like, hmm, maybe we should do something with this railway. How long does it, how long is the journey? So the the whole thing, I think it's eleven kilometers there and back. Um, and so it takes about three hours uh, with with lunch and a snorkel, and and it's really Whoa. cool. Yeah, I think that's good because I guess a lot of people don't actually explore Nandy very much. They kind of you know head off into different islands, or they just go straight to Dinarau you just, well, and you just, just stay at your resort, lie in a resort. You? You yeah, but there is resort. actually a lot to see. Oh know, yeah, absolutely. The, the sand dunes, Sikatoka sand dunes are amazing. And you might be lucky and see the, that's where the Sevens team train. They run oh. up and down the sand oh, dunes wow. um, carrying like massive tires. Oh so my gosh. If, yeah. if right. you're into seeing. Oh, it, I totally it, it is amazing. <laughs> it, it's amazing. Those sand dunes are incredible and they are so steep, but they've also got some some quite fascinating forest that, that's around them too. And then you're looking out to the crashing waves and um, mm. yeah, it, it's amazing. So will Shortland Street film there again? I feel they, they should. I, I want to go to these places. Yeah. 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 No, well, we, whenever we go there, we don't, we don't have any spare time. It's just, yeah. we're totally, when we're not shooting, we we have kind of you know publicity engagements, or you're visiting schools and stuff as, as well. So, yeah. but this sounds great. I shall I'll go there. Yeah. You know, in maybe my own time, wear a disguise. Maybe. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the more the deserted places. Yeah, <laughs> because because you get several weeks off a year, but it's always at the same time of year. Is that right? Um, the show goes on hiatus over the Christmas period for about three weeks, and each actor has has leave written into their contract. On top of that, okay. so yeah, so I do. I don't just have the three weeks at the end of the year. So, so. then, what's your summer holiday like in, in New Zealand? When the show, when you do take that break over Christmas, what do what I do? 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 Yeah. I always just stay here. I just always stay in in Auckland. I know that sounds boring, but I I just love it. I absolutely love it. And um, yeah, yeah, find things to do. Me and uh, my daughter Lily find lots of fun stuff to do. You know, and. Uh, Oh, I, I'm very happy to stay here. You know, and of course, everyone else leaves. So yeah, that's which makes nice. it delightful. Yeah, <laughs> over Christmas oh, and the New parking Year. is so much better. Here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do. I, or sometimes I visit my family in Wellington. Yeah. yeah. And what about your the children that you had on the show? Do you keep in touch with with them at all? A little bit through <laughs> your six um, children. <laughs> yeah, a little bit through um, through Facebook. Yeah, not 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 as much as I I. I'd like, especially the um, the the ones recently I've worked, worked most closely with is with the the Australian triplets. If you don't watch the show, it'll just take me too long to explain that one. But nevertheless, I have grown up Australian triplets. We need some kind of Venn diagram, don't we, to explain <laughs> exactly. everything here? Is that included in the six? The, the, yes, that's half right, of okay. them. Half oh, of yeah. the six. Yes, yeah. half of six is three. And so, so there's the triplets. Uh, they were just absolutely just great fun. I think because they were a bit older, and and so I, I just absolutely loved all three of them. Brilliant actors and brilliant people. So I I, I do I I got got a little Instagram message from one the other day, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully, when they're back in when he's back in Auckland, he'll get in touch. Yeah. If um if Chris Warner was going to go on a dream holiday where do you think he would go oh god somewhere so flash and expensive <laughs> that i don't even know it you know that i wouldn't even heard of it actually there's a place in fiji that that um called dolphin island have you heard of that no no i was lucky me. enough to stay there for a weekend it was like the most ridiculously ostentatious thing i did for a weekend through work i was very lucky but um it's this island off the northeast of um nandy and it's called dolphin island and it's this private island resort so if you book to stay there they won't book out any of the other rooms so you basically have the whole island to yourself oh, well, that's and, you, and you yeah. have a chef and you know oh, all these people looking at chris you warner. chris warner doesn't yeah. want other people yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, 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 i don't the, think so no he, which is, he bumped into anyone he'd, on he'd, holiday. T- he'd take his, his whatever you know the lady of the moment there and yeah. to try to impress her it's very romantic it would fail it yeah. would fail ultimately <laughs> of course it always fail 
Okay, well, he could go there. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Galvin, so great to have you on yeah. Trip Notes. Oh, I've had great fun. Thank yeah. you. Thank no, you for coming along. Yeah, we've, we've really enjoyed that. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you again another time. More travel inspiration. Don't forget, go to nzherald.co.nz forward slash travel and do check us out on Facebook and Instagram at NZH Travel. Don't forget to subscribe to yes. Trip Notes as well. So d- don't just listen. You subscribe. And, and leave us a review. That's right. Yeah. Rate it. Uh, tell your friends. Yeah. Um, review. Yeah, a good review. Yeah. If you don't that's like right. us, just shh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and then we're on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify. And, and thanks uh, to our intrepid uh, sponsors as well, Intrepid Travel. Thank you, Michael. Cheers. Thank you.